everybody. My name is Scott Mance, and I'm very excited to be here on Half Hour with Ted Lasso. We are discussing season three with stars Nick Muhammad and Anthony Head. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, Nick, I want to start with you because, you know, just just give us a quick sort of overview of of what season three is all about and like especially with regards to Nate. Well, I guess at the very start of season three, we pretty much pick up like where we left off at the end of season two, that we know that uh, Nate has uh, defected to West Ham. Uh, Rupert is now his big boss. And um, and so we join him at a place where he is undoubtedly the same guy who's sort of riddled with insecurities and sort of various sort of inner demons that occasionally rise to their surface. But, you know, he's got something to prove, I think, has Nate um, at the start of season three. Not just he needs to prove it to Rupert, but he needs to kind of almost prove to himself that he made the right decision, that he was right to leave Ted and AFC Richmond. So, he, but, you know, undoubtedly, <laughs> Rupert is, is, is not the most inspiring figure. He's not a positive force in, I don't think anyone's life. Is the entity. <laughs> and so, um, so, so I think we can anticipate that it's gonna be a bit of a rocky ride for, for Nate and that undoubtedly, you know, he, he's, he's, a, he's just merely a pawn in, in Rupert's sort of grand plans against Richmond and Ted and Rebecca. Well, let's take a quick look at season three of Ted Lasso. There he is, the wonder kid himself. Hello, how was your trip? Wonderful. Yeah, I was in St. Bart's with dear friends, the Sacklers. We were legally required to stay 50 miles offshore, but uh, what a beautiful boat. Well, sounds lovely. What's lovely are these delightful pre-season prognostications. Yeah, are they delish? Especially poor old Richmond. <laughs> Can you believe they're picked to finish 20th? Well, yeah, because there's no 21st. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> oh, I hope you've got some more zingers like that in your back pocket for the press of today. I, I might. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, so with that, uh, uh, Anthony, I want to ask, uh, just overall, season three has completely uh, changed the landscape of Ted Lasso. We're seeing completely different relationships, different dynamics, different connections. So in the case of Rupert and Nate, like what side now are we seeing of Rupert that we had seen the first two seasons? I think Rupert can see how much Nate doubts about himself and just, he. He wants to encourage him. He wants to say, hey, you know, you, you are great. You're amazing. But he, he does it in a way that just actually undermines him. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's very manipulative and it's very, very much sort of um, do it my way and I'll give you um, not power, but I'll give you things that will demonstrate how powerful you are like a car well well you know what nick uh i want to ask about after winning two back-to-back -back emmys for outstanding comedy series congratulations by the way <laughs> on that um how did that sort of give you all especially jason uh and and you know the showrunners and the producers more confidence to take bigger swings in what is clearly a more ambitious season three um I, I i think that they they have they have always sort of made a point of trying not to be distracted by any kind of awards sort of noise you know ob obviously you know you set out to make the best possible show and um you know everyone in including you know the creators and writers of the show uh, were, were just so um delighted that it, it resonated with so many people and people were taking these stories and these characters to heart and following their journeys and um i i always remember jason saying that there's a real like there is a pressure that obviously comes to to then delivering particularly you know a third possible final season and you know we don't know but um uh obviously the first two seasons had done very well and there was you know a quite a high expectation the bar was quite high but i remember jason always saying there's a real privilege that comes with that pressure because it just means that you know um people have kind of allowed us in and sort of welcomed the show in and um and 
so you kind of always, I guess, sort of have that at the back of your mind that, you know, yes, there is uh, a slight pressure and responsibility in playing these parts and delivering these lines and trying to sort of tell the stories that the writers want, but also what a great and fortunate position we all happen to be in that, you know, we're in a show that is um, uh, uh, sort of beloved in that way, I guess. And so we just, I mean, you know, just feel so kind of grateful and, and indebted to it, really. It was commissioned as three seasons. So the storyline was always, the arc of the storyline was always on the book. And it, it's a bit like doing a, you know, an album that everybody loves. You have the next album is, oh my God, you know, but the story was always there. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite remarkable. You know, I, I gotta say, Nick, the arc for Nate from season to season has really been extreme. Like, I mean, it's like an actor's dream to play a character that goes through so many changes. So when you came back for season three, what mm -hmm. was your approach to Nate? How did your approach to Nate change when you did him in season one and season two? Well, I think, you know, season one, Nate, was, um, uh, you know, it was a lot more in, in my kind of comfort area, even though, like Anthony was saying, you know, we, we all knew roughly where these stories were headed. And, you know, I was actually quite lucky that, that they kind of confided quite early on about some of the specifics about Nate's storyline and particularly where it's going in season two and where it would end up in season three. So, um, but, you know, season one was just sort of, you, you know, for me, there was a lot of kind of, it, it was kind of comedic sort of stuff. And so I felt kind of quite at home and comfortable doing that. And, and there was a real fun to that. And, you know, I got to be on the pitch side with Jason and, Brendan and you know uh, and, and Brett a lot of the time and in the locker room and you know that was so much fun and then naturally in season two because of where the story takes us there were far fewer I guess comedic sort of moments for Nate and they were I guess replaced by a lot more kind of raw and emotional dramatic storytelling and you know that that definitely presented challenges I felt I definitely felt that that was more of a challenge and um, but you know we had amazing directors you know a load of that creative team Jason, Brendan, Joe Kelly are pretty much always on set all the time as a, as a three, if not a four with Bill Lawrence and, and everyone. So, you know, there was, I, I just sort of relied on, on, upon a lot of their support and going into season three, I just remember trying to sort of channel this um, sense of abandonment, like genuine abandonment, because obviously I wasn't filming on the sort of sets that I was used to. I wasn't um, doing scenes with characters that I'd done, you know, uh, obviously Anthony and I had had kind of I think a couple of moments in, in in season two, but you know Rupert hardly even glances at me in season one, let alone does a scene with him. So, uh, you know, but with that abandonment came this joy to have scenes with with Anthony, uh, with Eddie who plays plays Jade, and and uh, and you know it really opened things up. But I think it was important that I tried to use as much of the kind of sense of I don't know if I kind of belong here as much as possible because that's sort of what Nate's going through as well. He's sort of questioning, you know, what what he's doing constantly. Let's take another look at season three of Ted Lasso. Sorry, does anyone have any questions? Yes, thank you. How are you and the lads getting on? Yeah, really great. Um, getting to know them, getting to know all about them, getting to like them, getting to hope with them. Excuse me, sir. What is he doing? Sorry, just a let's tie my shoe. Uh, yeah, next question, please. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Coach Shelley, you are now the manager of a contending Premier League team, but just two years ago, you were a mere kit man washing another team's underwear. I mean, it must all feel a bit overwhelming for you, yes? Not for me, no, because I earned this job. What's overwhelming is the confusion I feel when someone so intelligent looking asks such a stupid question. <laughs> well, you gotta go, Nate. All right. <laughs> so, like, you, 
you talked about something, Nate, that is really interesting. It's definitely wanted to talk more about uh, with you, Anthony, is how, you know, in season one and season two, so much of your of your dialogue, of your scenes are with Hannah. And now it's with it's with Nick. So yeah. how does that change a dynamic? You know, like working with a with a with a different actor, sort of keep keep Rupert fresh. You know, how does it bring on new challenges, change your approach to the character, and just really make it, you know, more invigorating as the series progresses? Um well, I mean <clears throat> it's being a character, what I've always always felt and I always love doing is the fact that it's not it's not acting. You are that character, and the the, the character speaks out from within. Um, most actors have um, a problem with self confidence. Not saying you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we love being other people because uh, we get a chance to uh, express something else um but um it's it's such fun acting with different people and with the cast of this show i mean it's 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 just magic um and being able to you know with 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 hannah it's about you know the the power that i hold over her is different to the power I hold over, over Nate. Um, but I've always got um, Jason, and I've said this before, but I've always, he's always there to give you ideas. Mm. Not just him, as, as Nick said, that they're all there, but, but Jason just has a, I, I don't know, he'll just say, what about that? Or what about that level? Try that throw that in and I love just being open to that I'll just I'll just do whatever comes in my head and I, I love that it's what it's what's fun that sounds like a dream for an actor it really is it really is collaborate like that and try new things the difference between um, Hannah and I is is your eyeline is probably a lot lower when you're doing scenes with <laughs> <laughs> there's that too <laughs> you know nick i want to you, you touched on this for, for a second already but i want to i want to expand on how other than i think like one moment face to face and then another moment from a distance mm. with where you swear you know nate sees ted with his son at the at the west ham game mm -hmm. uh you have not been with the cast like all like you, i think your last scene with like the main cast was season two so what it's been yeah. like shooting season three with like this whole new cast of characters here? Well, I mean, to, to, to a degree, obviously uh, phenomenal because it's just a wonderful cast. You know, as I said, Eddie, Anthony, who I had plenty of scenes with this season, you know, that's been a dream to hang out. Sam Fletcher, who plays Roger um, and, 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 and um, Spencer, who plays, uh, who plays Derek, the restaurant owner. He's phenomenally like so funny. I was always he was making me corpse all the time but um but i think um uh it's, it's a strange old thing because obviously we were still shooting in the same studio so we'd sort of still see each other yeah. and um <laughs> so we were all kind of like but i kind of really tried to make a point of not going onto their set not alienate myself from 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 that environment but just to to really have this sort of sense of uh kind of like loss and sort of slightly pining to kind of be back with them um but of course like anthony was saying you know Jason and the gang and you know everyone was always kind of on, on, on set sort of milling around and sometimes you know I think even when we were doing some stuff at West Ham Hannah was just sort of in the background just sort of chilling out before her scene so we, we were kind of sort of there as a sort of family but um uh but yeah there is it, it is it is a strange thing and particularly actually the the guys who played the West Ham football team who are like lovely lovely guys but obviously I didn't didn't know any of them certainly not like how I know the uh the guys that I see Richmond and so you know so doing sort of scenes with them where I was meant to be in charge of them and in a position of sort of power suddenly felt really intimidating because these are great gen you know genuine athletes you know I think they're semi-pro pro footballers all of them anyway and so there was a real kind of sense of imposter syndrome but I think again that's sort of what Nate is sort of going through as well so it's all really useful mm. stuff like what's what's your take on on how Rupert starts the season see Nick, who's almost like a father figure in some way, maybe not the greatest father figure, but still, 
to to just sort of this uh, change uh, that we this gradual change that we see. They don't overwork anything. They just bring the point in where it comes, and it's it always that way. It, it's just that much more. Um, don't know. It just just comes bang. It, it comes out of nowhere, and it's it's not something that I was acting. It's something that I was thinking, um, and it's it's little moments like that, little su subtle moments that you just your mind speaks. Um, but that's what I love about um, uh, Nate and, and Rupert, the fact that, I mean, people have always said, you know, this show is about mental health. Um, and it hadn't even occurred to me, of course, that Nate's mental instability about his own belief in himself for various reasons, but also Rupert, because, I mean, he is a narcissist and narcissism is a, a mental disorder where, you know, as far as he's concerned, he's the centre of the world. So, it, you know, as far as he's concerned, what he wants is most important and what he shows, Nate, you can do this, do this, and you're on my team. Oh, what do you mean you don't want to be? Well, go away then. Yeah, uh, let, let's it. talk. Let's talk about that. Uh, you know, Nick. So you know, at the start of season three, Rupert is basically Nate's sort of father figure. Okay, but then Ooh. his attention changes to this hostess at the restaurant, who Jade, who uh, you know, has a really nice relationship with with Nate. Uh, so talk about that that change, that confidence that uh, mm -hmm. Nate is getting, and the, of course, the actress working with the actress who plays Jade. Yeah, I mean, Eddie's great. And obviously, so she was um, in, 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 in season two, you know, we first meet her in season two. And, um, um, and, and I, 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 you know, what? I need to find out from, from the writers at exactly what point they decided that um, Jade was going to be the, the, you know, the Nate, the Nate and Jade thing was going to happen. It is seeded really early on. Like, in fact, I think Nate asks for her number the first time that we meet her in, whatever episode it is, probably episode five of season two or around then. Um, and, um, and, and, and what's great about Jade and, and, and also the way Eddie plays Jade is, is this sort of real kind of ambivalence and often some sort of coldness towards uh, anything that um, is quite seductive to Nate when he's in a bad frame of mind. So the kind of the power or the illusion of power and the, you know, money and, um, ego she's just not and you know football she's not even into football and so so she she doesn't she doesn't accept any of the uh uh the kind of the nonsense that um Nate sometimes spouts when he kind of goes in there trying to impress her but there is a real turning point I think in episode five of this season where he realizes that she sees him for for who he is but isn't not in a judgy way and not in a not not necessarily even in a massively positive way, but certainly not in a negative way. And because that place where she works holds so much for him in terms of his upbringing, and it's it's very you know very tied to um, uh, his his family. That place it kind of it's symbolic of of things. You know, to be fair, it's symbolic of things that aren't always great. You know, him trying to get the table seat is because he's trying to impress his dad, and there's clearly toxic build up with his dad, which we possibly might explore towards the end of this season. But um, so. But it, it represents a very personal place for Nate, and it's nothing to do with Richmond. It's nothing to do with West Ham. It's nothing to do with Ted or Rupert. It's it's just to do with him. And so when she sort of almost sort of just sort of just sees him and just talks to him as just another human being, that's a real kind of eye-opening moment for Nate because so many times he's not really been able to. He's always sort of changed the way he's changed his behaviour depending on who he's speaking to, and actually she represents someone who he's just been able to speak to really freely. And whether she's been cold or jokey or positive or negative with him it's slightly kind of you know sort of water off a duck's back it doesn't it doesn't kind of cut in the way that sometimes he'll take things really personally and, and stuff so she represents a really positive force in his life at that point um I think it's still important to note that for him to truly change you know if we are going to see any kind of redemption and there are definitely hints that like that he is seeing that Rupert is not great you know um, <laughs> and uh and um 
uh, but I think what's really important is that for Nate to fully change, he has to make that decision him, himself. Like no one else can do that. Like not even Jade can sort of make that decision for him. He has to, I think, realize the error of his ways himself, but she might well be that kind of guiding light towards that sort of self-realization. Well, like I mentioned, there isn't a whole lot of, of interaction between Nate and the rest of the cast from season one or two, but there is one moment, one face-to-face -face moment that had to happen and we have that clip for you right now. Best luck out there. Hey, Nate, is that you? Oh, hi. See you oh, that's okay. How you been, man? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good, good. Listen, Ted. I, I just want to say the way I left. Nathan. There you are. Yeah. Oh, man, you just cut Rip. that tension with a big chainsaw wow anthony i want to ask like in terms of of as you know you're developing rupert like what what was sort of a highlight for you filming season three like what scene did you love filming the most the nightclub when yeah. um nate he doesn't confront me he just says uh sorry i don't want to do that but he he hides it he says you know he, he's got to go somewhere and um i loved i really loved that that moment between us where you, we i felt rupert feels suspicious yeah yeah, yeah. i loved it. it was it was so subtle fun it's th there's also so much in that episode Anthony. i don't know if you remember but Erica Dunson, who 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 directed that episode as well. There yeah. are like there are certain like moments in it that are almost I think shot like a horror film. Like there's a bit where I think Nate is doing sort of some gameplay strategy, and and Rupert just like appears in the doorway. That is literally like this ominous figure, and I think the music almost supports it in that way. And it is yeah. you just realize like how like you you could put a slightly different soundtrack and it would be pure horror, like a pure horror film, like this kind of seething kind of monster kind of lurking in the background. Just yeah, I love it. You know, as because like season one really de debuted while you know we were still pretty much in lockdown, and then season two we were kind of coming out of it. And now season three, like we're really coming out of it. So there's been like, even though the reaction from the beginning has been great, the in-person reaction that y'all have been getting for, for the show has probably been very stacked, uh, you know, especially now that you're out in public more. So so as you've gotten out in public more, you know, and Anthony, I know you have a, a massive following anyway from, from the, the Buffy days and everything, but how has that changed now that you're out in public more after people have seen all three seasons or almost all three seasons of, of Ted Lasso? Well, um, the more that they've got to know Rupert, the more they dislike him. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, um, it's it's very much, you know, wow, um, because he's, as a person, you don't dislike him until he acts the way he does and you hate him. Um, so I love, I love presenting him as, as something that is, um sort of as i say you know oh do i like him or don't i like him i'm not sure i like doing that and that's what i get back from people saying uh, i don't understand i thought i liked you and now i really hate you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so okay so nick the while people have seen let's say people have seen seasons one and two but they haven't if they haven't had a chance to to start season three yet what would you say to them to entice them to kind of like dive right in and binge through season three and get caught up if they haven't done that yet? Well, well, put put aside a long amount of time because the episodes are about twice as long as they were in, uh, <laughs> in, in, in oh, yeah. season one and two. So it'll take you a good while. But 
oh my goodness, I would just say, just dive in with an open mind because, you know, the writers on the show are just so great. They've taken so many, and so many characters, you know, in so many kind of different, kind of weird and wonderful directions. And, you know, you, you see, I'm unpicking and this sort of, um, you know, just unpicking these characters and just sort of seeing how layered they are. And, you know, not, not talking about Nate, just talking about everyone. And the fact that they can seemingly do that for kind of every character in the show and giving proper screen time, you know, to everyone and really serving storylines well. You know, Colin's storyline in this in this season is obviously huge and, and, and you know, tied to Trent Krim as well. And like, you know, just, um, you, you know, you, you feel like you know a character and then actually they deliver a storyline that just opens up a whole new kind of like um, uh, a whole load more depth to their to their character, actually. And so that's a kind of a, a joy, particularly with this season. And, you know, we're lucky that we've had the the, the time uh, to, to kind of in, indulge, you know, those characters. And that's one of the great things about a streaming platform is that, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, some episodes can be 30, 40 minutes and some, if they require it, are like an hour, you know. And so yeah, that, that's yeah. been brilliant that we've been able to sort of see these storylines develop and flourish in the way they have. And there's, yeah, that, you know, season three does that in spades, definitely. Um, I love the one that's set in, in, in uh, Amsterdam. I think it's yeah. a beautiful act. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's a great episode. I got to say, also like, episode eight, I, I fell in love with. I just thought the one about uh, Ted Lasso basically letting go of his wife and a, a number of things. It was oh, it's beautiful, beautifully done. It's 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 deeper. It's more profound. Yes. It's still full of joy. And in terms of like the longer episodes, Nick, I say, bring it on. <laughs> you know, I love yeah, it. Good <laughs> Let's do it. But I want to thank both of you uh, for, for joining us for this conversation on Half Hour With. Big thanks to our friends at Apple TV Plus for making this conversation and to everyone watching. Thank you so much for spending time with Half Hour With Ted Lasso. Thank you so much and see you next time. <laughs>